what we're doing on this occasion, um, which we've never done before, we're in our studio. So we're at our base today, broadcasting live from the studio and also linking up internationally. So we'll get these bugs ironed out as we go throughout the show, but please bear with us. And um, if you can, if you're on Facebook, welcome to our Facebookers. Can you share the link, please? And welcome to our peeps on YouTube. Welcome to you all. If you can just text or pass around the um, link for it so our other peeps can join. Today is a very, is a very, I would say special day. I think it's a special day. Um, we have um, someone who is a well-renowned prom promoter from from the ends or from local Hackney, as we will say. And we're going to be talking to Sir Anthony Brightly very shortly. But before we do that, on the release of his new short film that he's got coming up, and single, should I say. But before we do that, before we do that, my co-host has been sitting here waiting patiently. <laughs> Mr. Eastender, how are you doing, sir? I'm, I'm good. No, good. No slip-ups today. We're live. First take, I've got to do it in well, one take. Well, we did, well, we, we yeah, normally we, do it. Well, well, yes. Um, but it's nice to see that people are, um, that we're here, and um, and hopefully everybody can hear us all right, so everything's cool. Reggie's not here with us today. Uh, what happened to him? I've got no idea, actually. And, you know, I saw the text message and bad me. I should have, um, you know, given him a call and just double checked to make sure he was 100% all right, but I didn't, so... I'm going to make sure, first thing after the show, he's going to be the first person I call just to make, make sure, sure okay. all is well. I'm sure knowing Reggie, all is well. But maybe, he, anyway, he sends you this apologies because he, he did say that he couldn't make it in today. So you got, I'm sorry, you've got the ugly two here today. So <laughs> you've got East, East Ender and you've got myself here today. So what's been happening? Uh, before we get into it with um, Sir Anthony Brightly. Sir, because there's, there's a lot of people going around with fake titles. Anthony doesn't really have that title. It's like Anthony Brightly. But I think today we're going to rubber stamp and certify and put a sir on his name. I thought the sir had been rubber stamped anyway, to no, be honest with you, because you know, like, he's, he's one of those gentlemen, um, member of the community that has done so much for the community that, especially around music business, um, and given a platform to... I mean, we'll go through some of the names um, later oh, on. Oh, 100%. But, but I, I, I call him Anthony or I call him Mr. Brightly. But you know. I, I don't even know what to call him. I, I, I don't want to, because a lot of people just call him Brightly. I don't want to call him Brightly because I feel I'm being so disrespectful. Brightly. So, so Brightly. I always try, and then I, and then I want to call him Anthony, but I feel like, you know when you're you? I, feel, <laughs> I can't call because it's big. You know I mean? Mr. Brightly. Mr. Brightly. Mr. Brightly. Mr. Brightly. Mr. Mr. Brightly. Name to call. Cool. So welcome to Set the Trend Podcast. It's a special <laughs> today and absolutely... It's gonna be it's an, an absolutely pleasure. There's not many people that I look for. I mean, I look forward to interviewing a lot of um, the legends uh, who have grown up in the street culture, who have grown up in the club culture. But this particular gentleman has his foot in starting and making the platform for a lot of the street sounds that I hear now. Every time we interview some of the sounds that we grew up on that you know that we were aspiring to be like yeah this gentleman's name and sound so george and anthony brightly always pops Has up mentioned in 90 98 of our podcasts always from about two years we've been doing this and everyone mentions his name, his name. And, so, and rightly so which right. we're going to discover right and he's got a new short film and a new single out and hopefully we should have him on the line if everything is going to be um, working to thing. I'm looking towards my technical team here. So hopefully they they will be able to make him pop up on, on your screen all the way from lovely and sunny Antigua. And hopefully he can hear me. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, Mr. Brightly? I, I can hear you loud and clear, you man. <laughs> right. We're having problems hearing you at the moment. Well, can we hear him? Oh, you're not hearing me? Oh, but that's not good. Why are you oh, not hearing me? I can get him up on my... You, you really need to be hearing me. Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, well, we've got you. Well, we've done... Well, we've done, well, <laughs> Magic. Uh, well <laughs> we can We can now, but there's going to be a little delay on it. We can work with that. 
<laughs> so we're going to ask you some questions, but there's a little delay on on our end. Okay, right. So, okay. um, when we talk about Anthony Brightly, um, we talk about club owner, and let's go through some of the clubs that you've owned or that you've played or that or that you played a part of. So let's talk about Phoebe's. Let's talk about o Oasis. If anybody went to, well, Phoebe's is the old. Phoebe's was before Oasis, and Phoebe's moved into o o Oasis, which a lot of our people went to back in the day. In fact, a lot of people went to Phoebe's when you was in there. It was Sir George, one plane on some of those nights in Phoebe's. Um, you also was the owner of Maxim's in Dalston. Then you went on to own Chimes and Pegasus. I mean, who hasn't passed or played through your clubs? I think it isn't worth mentioning those names because there's probably be two or three sounds. So the sounds that has, I mean, you've had everybody from internationally known Stone Love, Mikey B from the Dream Team, originally before he was, he went into the Dream Team. You've had Chris Nat, Mysteries Pass through your club, Touch of Class, Funkadelic, Asher World of Girl Movements, Booker T, hmm. D DJ Spoonie, the list goes on. Bad Boys, Latest Edition, Studio Express, Fifth Avenue, <laughs> Casual Affair, GQ, Special Touch, Super D, GNs, Metro Media, Aquarius Disco, and you also gave a platform to um, the Heartless Crew and Gal Flex to kind of get on their way. I, I mean, we would say that they probably would have made it anyway, but we can discuss that a bit later. But you gave them a big platform within your club and you helped promote them to help them on their way. You're also an international promoter promoter and CEO of D-Jam Festival, which takes place in Antigua. Um, and you're one of the founders and of the international <laughs> reggae group, Black Slate. Wow. When you say all of that, um, for me... Even listening to you say, it's um, it, it feels amazing to me. And and you know, before I go any further, um, I've been asked the question: Why did I wanna start launch this thing on this particular day, the twenty third of September? And the reason being is two reasons. One, it's the birthday of my mom, who's the first lady in my life who's a lady who believed in my little dream. And when I asked her to buy me my organ, she said it was okay and she helped me to do what I had to do to get my organ. And it's also my eldest daughter, Aisling's birthday today as well. So to the two ladies in my life, it's their birthday today. One's gone, but one's living on and working with me. So happy birthday to my daughter, Aisling. And big birthday to my mummy, big time. And um, and really, without my mum believing in me, and then my dad following the suit, all what you're saying would not have happened. And that starts why we're where we are. Somebody has to believe in somebody to be able to make something start. And when people come and ask, can I play in your club? Or can I play with your sound? Or can I, can I, can I? I wanted to play with somebody before, so it, it's automatically, because you might be the top number one sound, yes, I might turn around and say, well, you can't play with me because you can't play good enough. But once you are of that standard and you can play good enough, then boom, you will get the opportunity. Same with the clubs. I would say to them, well, yeah, of course I'll give you a chance. Um, but you have to work for that chance. Just like when I went to Cubies, you talk about Phoebe's, you talk about Cubies, you talk about Oasis. I went to Cubies and I said to the owner, your club's not working, you need me to play in there and I'll make it work. He thought I had some front. Six months later, he called me, the rest is history. So somebody has to believe in someone to make something happen. And, you know what I mean? I might have helped along the way, but all of these guys you've spoke about, every single one of those DJs are DJs in their own right, and they are a class amongst themselves. 
Mr. Brightly, um, now you've gone on and you've, I mean, you've now gone on to make this film, this short film that we're going to go into shortly because we want to let the people um, see the short film. And I'm going to ask you to introduce it shortly when I, when, when I stop speaking. Um, just give us a short introduction into why you made this short film and what do you think that you'll be getting that we're going to get out of it as as the public so what do you want to get over to it and then just introduce your short film and then we'll play it and we'll speak to you in, in another 15 minutes after it's finished all right so first of all i always wanted to make a movie uh, you know everyone wants to be on the big screen and um but i didn't know how that was going to happen so i've had a script sitting down for years wanting to make a movie and trying to find someone to make a movie with and it was just so far in a way that it was almost like impossible. And then I watched the, the story of Lena Simone. And when you, when after watching that story, I was inspired to, to redo as a single for Black Slate. Um, we decided to do Young Gifted and Black got the song Young, Gifted and Black. But we wanted to make it special, so we wanted to travel around the world and do it with many different people. And, and more than just having it as a music video, I said it would be nice if we could turn it into a short movie and just listen to what other young people have to say about just life and trying to move from one point to another. And when we was traveling, we went to Australia. We got the horns from a group called Blackbird Hum in Australia. I asked the Antigua Youth Choir, the National Antigua, what is it? the National Choir, the National Youth Choir of Antigua and Barbuda. I saw them perform in England and I said, wow, how nice it would be to put reggae music behind that. And I asked a lot of people, but it's like with everything, you can ask, doesn't mean you're gonna get. So a group of people worked with us and we created the, the reggae version of Young Gifted and Black. And then I went to a short movie festival and I met this, well, this young man was going around taking photographs of everyone. And he looked at me and said, I think I need to take a picture of you. And I stood up with my show ourselves and said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> and, um, and we got talking only for me to realize that the man I was talking to was the man who was part of, partially responsible for this film festival. And boom, that was my, you know, that was my introduction to saying, I want to make a movie. <laughs> and it just so happened that he also watched the Nina Simone story and he said it would be an absolute pleasure. And I did my bit, but this young man, and he's a young man, is really the man who's responsible for this movie, Daniel. So let's watch Young, Gifted and Black, the short movie. To be young. Gifted in black Oh, what a lovely, precious dream To be young, gifted in black Open your hearts to what I mean The song Young, Gifted and Black, written by Nina Simone and it's been adapted by Aretha Franklin, Bob Andy, Marcia Griffiths and now Black Slate is going to record it. Young, Gifted and Black, written by Nina Simone, why she was inspired by talent that she saw in black people. And I believe that the song was written to encourage, to let you know that 
You are one of many with a talent. You are one of many that are gifted. Be able to receive some sort of guidance from somebody who believes in you. Not from what they see in the physical world, because a lot of the time people who teach us are only teaching us what's been done already. Like what's been seen already and they teach you how to do it again. But to really be gifted means that you're doing it from the inside out, you know? You're, you're, you're inspiring someone from the inside out or you're even feeling inspired yourself. All we hear is young people is laugh, cast, gossip. Laugh, cast, gossip. When have you lot ever, ever, ever rise above that and said, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna help this individual because I can see what road they're going down. And me. Fantastic. Give me half time. I have done. Well done. Well done. I have as well. Well done. Um, I like helping young people to find their passions uh, and to help them to overcome any emotional challenges because lots of young people, well, people experience trauma in their life. Um, and sometimes they just don't have that emotional support at home or at school and lots of kids are misunderstood and I was one of those kids at school so I can really relate to young people that are just misunderstood or as like palmed as a naughty kid rather than an intelligent kid that just needs to be engaged with in a different way. I had a youth worker when I was growing up and it wasn't nothing like she, she had to do like loads of one-to-one -one work with me it was just her presence and her like saying little things like Oh, hey, what do you want to do when you're older? And I'll be like, I don't know. No one ever asks me that. And just little bits she'll say to me that made me, I think, go to uni, made me think that I can be more than just a girl from the estate. So, yeah. The thing that we have as black people is that we've got unison. The best example of that is culture, food, music. So, in my opinion, to be young, gifted and black is to be able to appreciate what came before you and utilise that to make yourself better.
young black people once again using social media are always got this motive of money is the motive but they don't really have a plan so it's a bit reckless you could see something on social media and motivate yourself to and you might just look at the materials and say i want to get the materials and that's where recklessness comes in or you can see something on social media and aspire to be like a celebrity who had a plan does that make sense and i think the most important thing is the plan you look at you look you're looking at other people you're not watching your own journey your own self what you got so i think it's hitting me social media is helpful but then it's also it's a flaw man you, you kind of make like false hope uh expectation a lot of that man and it's just like if you said it earlier it's literally because you gotta work harder than the white man and it's like you're willing to put in that that work and that fight and you might put that work and that fight in and not get it anyway who's willing to stick around and do and put in that work young middle age or old now the fact that it's young gifted and black it means that you have an early start in life to pick up the rain and run with it you're gonna find a lot of negative thoughts come towards you because you weren't supposed to realize that you're, you're gifted and it might even come from your peers you know so it come from, from a cross-section of, of, of the people so you have to recognize the talent you have um, whether it be a songwriter or a dancer, right across the board. You're here for a reason, and that gift you have, you must portray it and, and extend it, extend it to, to, to others, so they can also benefit, just like how we can look back on, on that song, Young Gifted and Black, and relate to that many, many years after. And that's, that's to me the most important thing with, 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 with um, the idea of Young Gifted and Black. Yeah. To be young, gifted and black is not just something that's gonna happen overnight. It's a lot of things you have to endure. So I say, and you can't give up. As long as you keep that fire burning, keep that dream going. You see me? And knowing that one day you might have to turn around and mentor and a youth who was young like you and bring him through and encourage him. Because me say, cause each one teach one. Today me have the button, tomorrow you have the button. It's like a relay thing, yeah. Where you know what I mean? So everyone have to teach a one and pass on the experience, whether it be a drummer, a bass player, or a singer. Just stick to your goal and never be afraid to listen to whether I held or a younger person give advice. You see me? So yeah. Yeah, I, I see young gifted and black like, I don't know, like a mantra or something. Um, for me, it's almost, it's like a, it, it, it's like a feeling and, a, and a, a vibe really like of an everyday thing to kind of remember that, remember that, remember that. Even even though you know you you have your good times and it's you shouldn't really forget um, your roots, you know. And that's what to me, young, gifted, and black is about. Like the root of things. Like you know, when you're young, you know, that's to me this that in itself is like you being born is like a is like a great thing. You know, we've been through a lot a lot of oppression and things that's held us back and it's like a daily thing to just remember 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 yeah when you're young you know you're gifted, gifted and yeah. black and remember say talent is a discipline you see me, I say? yeah, yeah. It is yeah. you have to have the discipline no matter what it is the discipline have to be there yeah. and you have to respect what you're doing find this place Finding space, how many options should there be? I just think that, you know what, there's got to be some form of belief in our culture. Yeah, there's got to be more people doing positive things. I believe that my gift has empowered young, black gifted people to go on to sign contracts. Yeah, and then I would like to think that one day they will build a legacy. So I believe that if you're young and you're black, you're definitely gifted. This song, this movie, 
is to encourage each and every single one of you with your talent makes you different makes you special not everyone's gonna understand who you are or what you're doing and with most things that are original it's not until it happens that people understand but until that point it's an uphill struggle but if you believe the struggle won't be in vain Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Right, so we've been allowed to share this moment with Sir Anthony Bradley over there, and I'm gonna come back to him, but first we have the other main man behind the film who made, who put it all together made and made that happen. Saw the vision and made that happening. Um, as Anthony Brightly alluded to him um, earlier, he's a young chap. Um, gifted, gifted, and black, black, and um, he feels all the criteria there, doesn't he? he yep, he did. And we're gonna have a talk with him now. <laughs> Welcome to Daniel Glenn Barber. How are you, sir? Nice to meet you, sir. You're right. Yeah. Welcome to, to Set the Trend Podcast. Thank you for having us, man. Thank you for having me. Yes. So, when we look at your when when we look at your production, because it is it is still your your production. Um, how did Anthony clarify the vision for it? Because it's a very aspirational piece. So mm. as a producer, you've got to take someone's vision yeah. and make that into reality. Mm. So how did that process go when you first heard, when Anthony first said that he wanted you to do a 50? Was it always going to be a 15-minute short film? Is that, no, is we, that went, we went back and forth a little bit just on, I suppose, what I felt was enough time to get through to the young people. You know, we live in a world where everyone wants something in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So I had to look at, you know, what was enough for them. Um, but that being said, we got to a nice 15 minutes where we saw, you know what, each person speaking, let's keep it a nice one mm -hmm. minute. And at the same time, put the video in the middle, you know, so mm -hmm. people can take in the beauty of, you know, what Anthony's done with the group. Did you storyboard it? So when you was coming up with, with your with, with the stories mm. behind it, did did you put it together as in how you wanted it to be? So did he actually give you a script or did you talk it through with him? No, obviously, yeah. That's, I mean, uh, you have to. Mm -hmm. You know, even when you want to try and wing it. I mean, I studied film. So they, they drill that into your head, storyboarding, planning first, everything. So we had to, we had a lot of international calls where we had to be on the same page about how I'm going to start it. Um, and obviously where he's in Antigua and I'm in the UK, um, a lot of the interviews had to be done in that way, mm -hmm. you know, over here. You know, uh, but he did say if I wanted to come over, he would fly me over. <laughs> Only private jet. I should have took him up on that. <laughs> you know, like, you know about his private jet. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but hold on, but you was there in the beginning, wasn't you? Yeah, that's yeah, because that's we where met. he met you, right? Yeah, um, I was. Um, I created something called the Wadadli Short Film Festival um, with my partner at the time, um, business partner at the time, Dean Foster. Um, so on the first day, that's where I met. Um, Anthony, he mm -hmm. was a guest at the event and I didn't know him. 
I mean, I didn't know. It's weird. Did cause... you know anyone at, at that event? Or was you just touting your work? Or was your skills? I mean, yeah, yeah. I am saying my team, you know, family come out there. And, um, but no, Antigua, I had been to Antigua. That was my second year. Mm. I, I didn't, I've got family in Antigua, but mm -hmm. I don't really know people like that in Antigua, mm. you know. So being there, I was open to just meeting people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, um, so it initially was a networking opportunity to look at business, creating business links. You know yeah. what? I, I ain't even going to act like I'm going to lie. You know, when you're dealing with an event, it's stressful. Mm. Super mm. stressful. And because I was dealing with all the media side, the editing and stuff like that, it, it got to me that day. Okay. It, that day, the first day of the launch got to me. And, um, you know. How long was I, the event for? Was it a three-day event? It was a three-day day event, but we had been working on it for about a year. Oh. And, um, you know, I wanted to quit several times. I'm not going to lie. I wanted to quit several <laughs> times. Um, but... I'm not a quitter. And as weird as it sounds, although everything was great in that event, mm -hmm. the shining light now in 2020 was meeting Anthony Brightly. Mm -hmm. You know, he I met him at a time where, not even at a time, that day I was stressing. <laughs> I was not mm -hmm. happy. I, mm -hmm. I wanted to go home. I wanted to go to the UK. I wanted to come home. And I met him and he just, you don't know him before me. He, he just has a way of, <laughs> of make, I went home feeling like I could do anything. Yeah, he's very inspirational. He's very yeah. inspirational. Yeah. And he said to me, he goes, I've been looking for you. And I'm like, <laughs> what, do I, what have I done, sir? What, what happened? Where do I go? <laughs> and um, he's like, because he just, because he had just come out of my event, you know, the screening that we had did. And as I said, I don't go into my events. So as in when everyone was watching the screening, I don't go into the premiere. So everyone came out and everyone just wanted to meet who put this, you know, you know the media side together. And uh, and in terms of what was going on at the day, was it just a collection of sure. stuff that you'd done or other people had done it and you well, put together? The event How was, was it? Obviously the event was put together and we was at a very nice hotel called Carla Bay, which mm. is one of the best hotels in the island. Mm. Amazing. And we used their, their, their own cinema room. So it was amazing. Um, and that yeah, was just a collective, collective of your own work that, that was showcased. No, no, sorry. So as a festival, we were taking in submissions. So it was okay, none of right. my work. It was yeah. none of my work. We actually were the platform for other filmmakers. A bit like the Cannes Film, film just Festival. Like, yeah, yeah, just like any other festival. And I'm telling anyone who wants to do something like this, it's not as hard as you think. As long as you do it and you work hard at it, it's not difficult, you know. As a young guy, what made you want to pick up the camera? Pick up the camera. Yeah. Um, I started off as a rapper first, <laughs> as most of us do. <laughs> and and I can't I couldn't afford music videos. It was too much money at the mm -hmm. time. I never forget. Um, I don't know if it was uh I think it was called Greasy TV. It was one of my first videos I did, and they charged me like 80 pounds for this video, mm -hmm. and I had no money at the time. And I don't know why I thought when this video's out, I'm popping, I'm gonna be sick. Mm -hmm. And I realized. 60 views. <laughs> I said, I ain't paying another 80 quid for this. Like, if it's not boosting me up to that level, so I thought, I'm picking up a camera, I'll do it myself. Do you know what I mean? And I think, to be honest, now I'm lying, I was in Ayanapa and I've got a friend called Mr. M who had a song back in 2010 called Dash Down. Mm. And I wrote, I was supporting him when he was going around in Ayanapa mm. and all over the UK, one extra charts and all of that. And I was scared to perform. I'd always rapped with my friends in the block and stuff like that. You know what mm. I mean? Like, you know, street rapping and that. And he was like, oh, you got performed. But, you know, everyone's just looking at you. They don't know you. They knew his song. Mm. I opened for him, but they didn't know. And um, I remember I picked up the camera and even though M is my guy, mm. he said, I put the camera down. What are you doing? Like, you're a rapper. What are you doing? Like, you're performing. You're an iron apple. Why mm. are you picking up a camera? And um, I just stuck with the camera and 10 years later, and that was your gift. I'm sitting there, mm. and Andy Brightly, and you know what I mean? Set the trend and no mistakes, and, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I, well, no regrets. So, so we are where we are. So when we talk about what did you get from, I mean, you put that together. What did you get from that as the producer? Yes. Yes, from Young, Gifted and Black. Do you know what it was? Um, I had watched the Nina Simone documentary on Netflix mm -hmm. before before Anthony had told me he wanted to do Young, Gifted and Black. Okay, so you... Yeah, so... Connected straight yeah, away. Yeah, so as soon as I clocked, I'm like, 
I'm more thinking, how did you even get the rights to this song? Do you know what I mean? Like, Nina Simone's supposed to be, no, it's supposed to be, is a legend. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, I'm thinking, how am I this close to her legacy like that mm -hmm. when so many people covered it? So, um, yeah, it kind of hit me, but I was like, you know what? I'm stepping into this. This is my time. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a part of that. And I think I was very much trying to push the mentality that I need to look after my people, you know? The young people. I started mm -hmm. 2019 was that year for me when I was like, you know what? I used to introduce myself to people and say, I'm going to win an Oscar because I studied film, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I wanted to move away from music videos mm -hmm. and I wanted to be more creative. And I used to actually introduce myself. I'm going to win an Oscar in five years. It's going to happen. And you still believe know. that now, right? No, I mean, if it happens, it happens. No, but you I still believe that now. See, but this is the thing. No, you still this believe the, that no, now. No, no, see, but then, don't, get me, don't get me wrong. No, I'm it getting will, you right. I mean, in the sense I'm that... I'm just making sure that you still believe in your dream. I don't need an Oscar to, oh, okay. to, to be great in my field. And God forbid, if I leave this earth tomorrow, I feel I've done... A, I will do enough to influence the young people mm. that come from where we come from, that you can do anything. I did a festival last year. Now I'm doing a feature film this year. Just worked with Anthony Brightly. You lot told me how much of a legend he was listening to this. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to certain clubs like, I'm like, well, I didn't even know about all of that. Like mm -hmm. when I found out Heartless Crew and all of that and you guys the under connections. him, I'm like, I'm looking, you lot are legends to me. Mm -hmm. So for to meet him and he be that person to you, I'm in like, like how did God do this? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like not chasing social media followings and stuff like that just working on my craft and greatness came to me apart That's from anthony worked. as an elder did other elders give you encouragement yeah to to follow your dream obviously my family and my family like they you know our family tell us we're great all the time we don't listen mm. do you know what i mean um and and yeah that they were always some of my aunts my mom all of them always always did that for me but in the film world to be fair one of my main mentors is a guy called um Enrico Tassian and he he's always he's always believed that I can do greatness you know from he was he was my he was my um tutor and it's it's weird because someone said to me when you leave university your tutors don't really stay close to you like that do you know what I mean so I definitely believe he saw something in me and he still does and he's executive producer on the new film I'm going to be doing with Anthony and some other people as well. Um, so yeah, it's going to be big. Do you know when one of the things that I get from you um, hearing you talk, um, legacy is very important to you. Yeah. Leaving that, leaving something for the, because the way the world is now, you can be forgotten in a minute. Yeah, if you don't document what yeah. you do, if you don't put down what you do, people just forget about you and then they write their own story to something that you've done. Have yeah, you found it that way in the in, in in the world that we we as a people, as a race, have 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 to continue documenting um what we're doing yeah. and what we've done so far? Do you know what I had to do? I had to remove I had to remove money being something that I need to chase. I had to remove that from mm -hmm. my head because I realized it's never ending and and material things come with that. You know, I remember being 20 trying to get a license to drive. I mean, I, I was obsessed with driving. Um, so no one could ever tell me to get out of their car. Yeah. <laughs> and, Bitch. And I, I, got it. I remember getting it and I remember sitting, <laughs> I remember sitting in my car and I got it, putting up the windows, blaring the music, just it's my whip. And then the parking ticket started coming <laughs> and they started clamping my car. And then I'm like, and then I started going places that I wouldn't necessarily need to go mm. just because I had the car. Mm. Yeah. And then I realized this actually, this, this money don't make me happy. I got to a stage where I got a lot of money mm. and it did not make me happy. Now it might make some people happy and that's each to their own. Mm -hmm. I'm not like money does a lot of things for us. Don't mm -hmm. get it twisted. But I knew it did not give me the happiness I was looking for in my life. And I realized seeing people be influenced mm -hmm. by, by positive messaging and, and encouragement, especially the young people. I've got little cousins and little brothers and sisters. You know, this is what I do it for. You know, okay. I've got my sisters and my mum on my wallpaper, so I never forget. You know, I listen to someone called Eric Thomas from America. He calls himself the hip-hop preacher. I listen to him every mm. day. Mm. And, you know, he tells you, work hard at what you do. You know, talent only takes you so far if you're not working hard. Do you get what I'm saying? And 
with that being said, as I said, greatness came to me. You know, it's not finished. I'm still only 31 years old. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I'm telling you now for free, I've spoke to enough people in my life that I, they know my message. They know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. They know what I'm saying. If I don't need to, if I can't say it, they could speak for me and they know my message. And that's enough for me. Your up and coming film that you're working on. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Or is it? Or is <laughs> no, it... no, of course. I mean, you know, I didn't get, I didn't, we didn't get industry support like that. It makes sense. COVID hit anyway. But one thing about the industry is if you're waiting for funding and stuff like that, you know, you can you can potentially get it. But there's so many people running after it. Yes. You know, so we we self-made that. You know, we did that um, for Deuce Films. That's my thing. And um, it's, it's, it's basically about uh, an individual called Daryl who um, spends his time trying to be around his social group all the time. Uh, but of course, like all of us, miss the fact that building a foundation for yourself is actually the most important thing. 100%. You know, um, you know, but you know, being in lower class society, the hood, aka the hood, um, you know, he he tries to use aggression to to seek that you know approval and that respect, and the pe he ignores the people around him that you know let him know that being assertive sometimes is the best way to go when you're a passive individual. But the key thing is building a foundation for yourself. That's what I want to show the youths. Do you know what I'm saying? And we we hit topics like um, parenthood, you know, uh, mm -hmm. sexuality, um, mental health. All of these films are in the film. And yeah, as I said, Anthony Brightly is an executive producer on that. Okay, so what also comes to my mind hearing you talk so eloquently about the struggle is you yourself being an independent film producer, mm -hmm. it must be a struggle at times. Um, how can, if someone wanted to invest in you or get in touch with you, or what do you need, you know, um, take this as, a, you know, as a as a platform where you can advertise your way and say, well, this, you know, if someone's interested out there and they want to be part of what I'm doing and part of the journey, I want to invest in what I'm doing or invest in you mm -hmm. that directly, how, what do you need to, kind of put kind of to kind of, to, to, kind you know of push the, you on you know that. what's mad the easy the easy thing that most people would say is money mm. and and it's not that i i i substituted money for hard work mm -hmm. so i i'll spend 10 hours in my room editing mm. planning storyboarding and i made that my love mm. to get what i'm saying so it ain't hard we're at the stage now where we've shot 95 percent of the film shot in 6k mm. do you got what i'm saying black magic camera you know Right now, we're at distribution stage. You know, that's one thing I can't, you know, hard work is one thing, but one thing I can't is the marketing side. Mm, yeah. That's something that there's certain things you can't, you know, you, you can't fight against. Oh, yeah. so, so right like, now, it's distribution. distribution. It'll be distribution. distribution. Right okay. now, we're trying to get the film in um, independent cinemas, you know, stuff like that. Um, and how quick. hard is that? Well, we just finished filming, so uh, mm, you know, um, I'm bringing in, I'm bringing in people that are good at what they do in terms of marketing. We're still looking for new people to come in and help us with that in terms of distribution. Um, but just it's just about the time. Mm. It's just about the time. You know, if you take away eight hours a day working, eight hours a day sleeping, you're less than fifty six hours in your week. You know what I'm saying? What do you do with your week? And if people see you as an inspiration and they want to get in contact with you, okay, yeah. For Deuce Films um, at gmail.com. Um, the the Instagram is yesman4d. That's the hashtag that we're pushing for this film. So any details, anything you want to know about the film coming. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's early days because we've just finished filming. And uh -huh. this is where the marketing starts. But mm -hmm. yes, man, 4D. Before it reaches the screen, right? How long do you reckon? Six months, seven months, a yeah, year? I mean, we're, we're looking at a premiere in February. Um, Genesis. Genesis Cinema in February, and we're looking at a couple other independent cinema bases. But yeah, that's that's the plan. That's you the know, plan. to be honest, social media will be the last place it ends up. Okay. So we're we're trying okay, to do it hard. Screen. We're trying to do it hard. Yeah, we're trying to do it hard. Maybe on an Amazon Prime thing or something like that. Yeah, for streaming and that. Yeah. All right, Daniel. Excellent. Thanks young, for coming on set the chain. Gifted and black. You yeah, are. young. This is that's the thing. Young gifted and black. That you know. Again, and he's my executive producer, one of the executive producers on my feature. So it all ties in, and I wouldn't, you know, get there if it weren't for him like that. So respect, man. And Good. Thank you for having me on here, man. No, thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on.
And uh, I think we still got problems with the line to Antigua, so we're going to have to get Anthony back at another time um, to give us some more information about, Yum. on from his perspective, about Young, Gifted and Black. Um, but we've had Daniel here, um, um, and I think he's he's eloquently told us about 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 the production and what's it about so thank you for coming in um in that film also the lead singer just for you did just because just you did know is anthony brightley's son so his son has taken um the mantle. Uh, yeah he's taken up the mantle and, and he's working with um black slate so and, and he's and they're very good uh we did a show with him at the jazz cafe mm -hmm. in august and yeah full of energy the songs, the hit songs, popular songs, the Migos, Dicks Man, you know, the catalogue is good. Mm. And yeah, Black Slate, mm. if you ever get an opportunity to um, see them perform. And of course, we didn't mention he had a top, top of the pops, top 10 hit with Amigo. 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 <laughs> Amigo. <laughs> so, um... Thank you for being part of Set the Trend Pop. Thank you for bearing with us through all the bugs and gremlins. It's the first time that we've gone live from the studio. Um, we're gonna, we intend to do some more specials where we're live in the studio. It's the first time we've also had an international um, um, elm, um, head, bit to the show where we've had someone from somewhere else who's just coming. So it's just been a bit technical today, but we'll get it perfect on the, on the next show, guaranteed. So thanks for joining us on Set, 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 Set a Trend podcast, Even <laughs> East, you can say bye. Uh, thank you. I want to, I want to do Set the Trend live every week. Though. You do, yeah? Yeah. I think oh, you have to have a word of the producers, man. No, the producers. Oh, yeah, rap, 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 rap. That's all, all good. Right, right, all right, good. Right, thank right, you. Right. Thank you. And thank you, Daniel. Much That's appreciated. Man, thank you yeah. so much for having me. Man. So like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's all Set the Trend podcast, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook or we're on Twitter. So you can subscribe to us and share the love on that. Thank you for being part of the special, our live special, our internationally live special, even. Set the Trend podcast. <laughs>